All right. I'm uh, still developing. And I'm in this experimental run. And I'm getting this YouTube channel serious. Since I hit 100 subscribers, and I think now we're about 118 or something like that. Since hitting 100 subscribers, I decided to just get more serious. So, that's when I came out with, with a standard, you know, I would got a webcam. So, the 10-minute podcast, which I've been doing for years, has video, but it's always had audio. And I will continue the 10-minute podcast. It's 10 minutes of Jesse. You can, I mean, it's in iTunes. It's in Stitcher. It's, you know, it's, it's everywhere. And... Then I decided to offer more, and I haven't been much of a stickler for format or editing or content because the main thing I was focused on, the main skill, the most important trait for any, and yes, I've got a little list here, isn't it? Like a little, yes, I when I write stuff down, I write in uh, cursive. I, I have a little. Where's my, where's my pen? I'm gonna pull my pen out. Whoop! See that? And I write with this little pen here. When I hold on, you know what I'm gonna do? There, I just clicked a button. The most important thing about doing a podcast or doing a show or t t something is to do it. The most important skill in uh, a, anything is to do it. The most important skill in playing piano is playing piano. The most important skill in driving is to drive. The, the most important skill about having a job is showing up. And I have not tried to make my podcast perfect. I've tried to make my podcast happen. And so the most important thing about podcasting I have done, I do it. So I get on a microphone, I record, I send it through the, the compressor and editor, you know, for audio stuff. And I upload it and it's the same and it's every week and it's on Monday. Now, um, I mean, today I messed up in my podcast for the first time. I went four seconds over my time. Um, I've never done that ever. I went four seconds over. Maybe I got too, um, too hung up on what I wanted to say in the podcast today. Cause I'll tell you today in, in the, in the podcast, I was talking about how irritating it is to talk to people who just don't care. And frankly, I'm thinking about spending less time with, with people who suffer from affluenza. When someone suffers from affluenza, I really, I think those people are dangerous. Jesus talked about throwing your pearls before pigs. Throwing your pearls at pigs. Pigs don't appreciate pearls, and when you throw something at them, they'll get mad and attack you. So I think when someone's got affluenza, when they've got their life too good, I, I think they're pigs. And, and I don't want to give them my pearls. So I'm thinking about, I'm really geeked about this. And when I podcast about something, it's something I'm passionate about. And so when you see me, you're going to see the real me. Okay. All right. Well, all this comes at a very interesting time. You know, things are developing. Just, I'm sharing my inside baseball life with you. That's what the Jesse Uncut's about. And, whoa, look at that. It's like getting ink all over the inside. That's weird and stuff. I'm finishing up Watch, Stand, Pray 365. I could have it done within a few weeks. It would be online at watchstandpray.com. Um, no, I, I don't, I don't want to show you that. I just, I'm too busy. Because I just got back from a from a long trip and I'm exhausted. Good, we go to watchstandpray.com. All one word: watchstandpray.com. I 
we'll be finishing up the book 365 reads. They are pithy and heart probing. Each has 365 words and um, they're positive and you'll have a happy, productive, effective life. It's got lots of Bible teaching, but it's not Bible-ish. It's, it's nothing that, uh, that the Bible thumper would, would, would get all oogly oogly about because some days it just talks about uh, how to make money or like, you know, not like secret, like the secret of making money, but it's, it's like, you know, open your mind, show up for work, you know, basic work ethic type stuff. And so when I finish that, when I get that finished, I'm, I mean, it, that's a hundred, I mean, 365 reads, 365 words each exactly. That's uh, 133 some odd thousand words. And this is the longest book that I have concisely written. Um, the book My Mind is, a, is an anthology, but this is the longest book I have written. And I, this is, I think, the shortest time I've ever written any book because we're looking at uh, five months maybe. And I took a month or two off to do other projects, including I took a month off to create my own handwriting curriculum. So uh, that's over at uh, write.pink, not .com, .pink, P-I-N-K, write, W-R-I-T-E, .pink. So this week while I was traveling, I came across, and, I, and I'll tell you, I've already been thinking for years, I've been thinking about doing little acting rants. Like, like where I get on the camera here. You, you know, the latest thing is to do this. I don't know what they call it. it it's, it's like sound effect stuff. They'll be like. Yeah, and they do like these sound effects. And it's like, you know. It, it, it just, and this is a thing. People will sit for hours and watch some guy sit in front of the microphone and slowly, you know. You know, this is the thing. So I'm thinking about throwing up visual acting pieces for people to be able to take the sound effects and just, like, I'm just, I mean, I've got an actor ability. I've, I've never, uh, I have not explored my acting ability since I left high school. I'm thinking about, you know, just doing acting nonsense and contributing it because there's no visual part. I've been thinking about that. You saw it here on this podcast first. So, well, the, the Jesse Uncut. It's, it's only available uh, via video. On, of course, on multiple outlets. Of course, of course. I don't do anything on one uh, social media thing. That's a, that's a rule that I have. So, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next. And while I'm traveling this past week, I come across... Uh, what, jumpcut.com, J-U-M-P-C-U-T, jumpcut.com, jumpcut.com. And I wasn't looking for it. It jumped out to me as a YouTube ad, and I liked it. I said, I, I like this guy. This is, I've got this guy talking about how to YouTube, and he looks like M. Night Shyamalan, which, you know, which means what it means, but... I, Anyhow, it just, I just like this is this is nifty. I, it's, I was just fascinated with this, with what the guy was saying. A genius, genius guy here. So if you if you see the guy who looks like M Night Shyamalan uh, talking about uh, how to do YouTube videos, listen to him. I like him. I think that's the JumpCut.com guy. So I I I'm you know getting a knack for this. And I'm thinking I, I've got some ideas. I might go after some things. I could talk about life in Asia, but I'm doing that at, from asiawithlove.net. Uh, there's a need for theology. I've been thinking about teaching theology courses when I finish Watch, Stand, Pray. And uh, also life coaching. Um, I don't know everything, but important life decisions are important. I'll tell you, I got a buddy here in Asia and he's got a dream to get a a, a company of his own off the ground consulting and you know, Asian families live with each other, at least three generations under one roof, maybe four for a time. And, uh, he, he just helped his in-laws move 25 minutes away from where everybody works. 
to get a great big huge honking house out in the middle of nowhere. And he wonders why I don't go visit him. And he doesn't have time to visit me because he's too tired from working. I'm like, he's not too tired from working, he's too tired from traveling. Now, you know, I mean, I, I wish my buddy the best, and I don't think our relationship's anywhere near over, uh, but I don't know that he thought about that. He's, he's trying to get a company off the ground, but he's already gone off and bought his dream castle. And buying your dream castle before you build the money that's going to make your dream castle, that the job that he's got now might be the best job that he ever has. And that might be the best income he ever has because he just gave himself a one hour commute every day when, when his commute used to be 10 minutes. So, I, you know, just thinking about stuff like that, 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 that's, you know, life coaching has to do with just think things through, you know, like that. So I'm thinking about doing stuff like this. Um, and, you know, when it, when it comes with when it when it comes down to to strategies, I've just been thinking about this, mulling this all over my mind. You know, webcam for the first time, you know, podcasting for the first time, finishing a book, getting on. How am I going to do formatting? Now I find this this awesome YouTube thing. Really, really explains stuff well. Jumpcut.com. Really, really, really love it. And I'm all this is going through my mind, and I'm thinking, why in the world am I doing Patreon? Why? Patreon is for people asking for handouts. Pa 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 to me, my opinion. Okay, I don't want to insult the Patreon people. Patreon is for people that don't know how to make money. Patreon is for people that don't know how to run a business. They do good, awesome things, and they don't, for the, say, the life of them, they can't market, they can't get jobs. So they go to Patreon, and, and people like what these marketing inept people do, and I'm, I'm saying this kind of negatively more than is deserved. It's not this bad. I'm kind of being a little bit extra cynical, but, but that's what Patreon kind of is. And I'm not like that at all. I don't, I don't ask people for donations. I'm not the itinerant speaker who goes into a church and, and, and has an, an offering uh, where people donate money to my kid's college fund, you know, I, I, and, and to, so I can make my nice car payments and, to play for my airplane tickets as I travel. I'm not, I, don't, I don't know how to ask people to just up and give me money. And I'm just much more interested in a business type of thing where I run a business and I'll come talk at, at, at a church or school or wh whatever in the, in the city park, I don't care, and don't get money for it. And don't care. I, I'd much rather do something like that. So I'm... I'm, I'm seriously, it's you. Oh, oh, oh. You know, you don't make this stuff up. Remember, everything in these podcasts, you can take and cut and clip and put it into whatever you you can twist. You can take me sneezing right there, and and I love Donald Trump, but you can take me sneezing right there and. Uh, superimpose it uh, on a Donald Trump speech and make fun of Donald Trump with it if you want. I don't care. You can take my stuff and use it. My content is free. Mm. Why am I doing Patreon? Why am I doing Patreon? I, I... Why? Why am I doing Patreon? I don't know. Maybe... Maybe I there's something I can do uh, that's good on Patreon. I just I just don't know right now. Maybe uh, maybe Patreon is a good way to let people become a member of a club. I, I tell you one thing that I, I'm serious about doing is uh, letting Patreon you know members get get discounts part of the Jesse Club access to products. So I'm thinking about keeping Patreon. Patreon's not bad. Patreon's not bad. But I just asked myself, I mean, you know, that's, this is, this is important in any decision making. Always take an open mind and ask yourself, why in heaven and earth and under the earth should I do what I need to do?
Why in the world should I do that? I mean, it's what you need to do. But you should ask yourself, why in the world you're doing that? Because a lot of people do what they need to do, but they don't know why in the world they're doing it. So some things they get wrong or a salesman comes along and fools them and messes their whole life up because they didn't think about what they're doing. Why in the world are you doing it? So I asked myself, why in the world am I doing Patreon? I think I'm going to keep Patreon. I, I don't have a problem with Patreon. Um, but I am asking myself why in the world I'm doing it. Have to be honest. Got to be honest. Uh, no, 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 no. I know what projects I'm going to do next. My Linux curriculum's all done. Uh, the, the, the shell 101, the guru, ink verb guru. It's on GitHub. Uh, very simple Linux curriculum. Teach yourself Linux. I'm going to make videos with that as soon as I know my watch stand. Pray 365. As soon as the 365 book is available in print on demand, I am going to do those videos. And I'd love to do it in two weeks. We'll see. We'll see if I can get it. We'll see if I can get it. I would love to do it. But I want to talk about coding, proper coding. Now, again, you're dealing with Jesse uncut. Okay. Just wanted to be clear with that. I'm not trying to do the cool, normal, classic, perfect YouTube video. This is just Jesse and I live in Asia and I'm just getting in front of my microphone with a green screen behind me and I'm talking. I like, I don't know if you know, there's not this shirt. I designed myself. This shirt costs, I have 150 US dollars into the design of this shirt, my own custom made shirt, which is why I wear it. WordPress. Ah, <sighs> WordPress. WordPress.org. It's WordPress isn't just the WordPress.com thing. WordPress.org. I love it. I use it. I as a developer, I love working with WordPress because they're always there. There, how is that? You can take that and put that into a video if you want. I love working with WordPress. But WordPress isn't God. So it's not the only piece of software that ever needs to be written for the rest of all time. So I hope WordPress continues and I will continue to use WordPress. And I recommend that people use WordPress and WordPress is wonderful. Okay, now... Where we can be different from WordPress, you know, in, in, the, in the coder world, Word, Word, WordPress did this recently, where they, you know, justify text, like you're typing your text out and like you can make it square on what's called justify. Okay. In the computer programmer world where they write the software that makes blogs. You probably know where this is going. Over the last two years, especially, it's hit. I mean, there was some before that. There's some that's always been there and it's really hit in the last two years and it's really hit even more in the last year. There's been this war that, that the code monkeys have waged against justified text. Now, right away, they'd say, stop, Jesse, stop, stop right there. Stop, young man, stop. We don't have a problem, see, with justify text. We have a problem with justify text in the editor, see. We want to have our justify text in the CSS style, see, of your website's theme, see. We don't, we don't want to have justify text in the editor. That needs to be a theming styling issue. And so we're just going to keep it there and take it out of the editor altogether now, see. That's what they're going to say. But... If they're going to put justify text so that 
you, you know, you get your WordPress and your theme and your website all set up and your website automatically takes your words and automatically justifies them. You're typing, writing your story and it's not justified. It has what's called a rag on the end. It's called a rag. In the publishing graphic design world, it's called a rag. It's cool to have a rag. Um, as Karen Cavett says, you don't want a shape in your rag. You should be kind of evenly going in and out. You edit it in a rag and their idea is when it goes to the website, depending on your theme, it's going to justify there. All right. So then how come none of the themes do it? Hmm. They took out the justify text button in the main editor because justifying text is supposed to automatically be done in the theme website when people are reading your final post on the website. Well, excuse me, but I want to know what it's going to look like justified text while I'm editing it. If you're going to take out the justify text button, like literally the editor, like when you're, when, when, you know, you know, you, you, people have a blog, go to a website, read an article. What's happening is the author of, I, I'm serious. The author of that article, I, I write, I write blog posts and stuff all the time. What's happening is when those writers are on their website and they're writing their article, that justify text button, it's gone. Imagine if the justify text button disappeared from a uh, LibreOffice writer. Or for those of you that don't have a life and live under a rock and are still using it from the dinosaur age, Microsoft Word. What if Microsoft Word did back in the dinosaur age when people actually used it, stopped having that little justify text button? What, what would, well, that's happened inside websites. WordPress is just one of them. Ghost uh, was doing it before them. What is it with this war against justify text? What, what is it? Well, now, see, son, it's not a war against justify text. It's, it's just, we don't want to have that, see, in the editor now, see. That's, we, we don't want it in the editor. That's, that's a theming option. We're supposed to have that in the CSS theming style options now, see. Then where is it? If you're going to remove the button permanently so that nobody anywhere, ever, anywhere, ever, ever, anywhere is ever allowed to use the justify text button inside your editing process, then they should always, always, forever, always, and ever, always have justify text as a permanent, always permanent part of the justify uh, text of the theme the CSS styling on the main front part of the website, but it's not. They've got one thing permanent, but another thing not permanent. And what this comes down to is the guys that write more PHP code for the web websites and writing the code to make the internet work, the guys that create more PHP and JavaScript code, then they create English or their own language written content for readers are the ones telling the written content writers, the actual real content creators, copywriters, and guys like me, how we are supposed to style our stuff when their expertise is not writing content, writing articles in English or Czech or whatever language. They're they're telling us how our content is supposed to be formatted when writing content isn't their job. They write the software that we content creators use. So this is what's happening in the internet. You use a website, something doesn't make sense. What's happening is the code monkeys, the guys, the awesome, brilliant, wonderful people who write the code to make the software are deciding what the software should be used like, how what, what features it should have, how it should function. And the, the general problem with that is they're not the main guys using this as their uh, forte, so to speak. They're writing the back end. But think about it. Who should really design your house? The construction crew? Should the construction crew tell you how close you need to have your refrigerator to your sink when you're cooking dinner and lunch? No, but that's what's happening in the software world. And this is where you've got the, the software engineering team, the engineer manager thinks that he's the PM, the, the product owner, the project manager managing the product roadmaps. And this is a problem that's happening all over the software industry in many, 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 many areas and ways. And, and you know, I'll tell you, 
um, I mean, the, the PHP code monkeys have a lot of great, brilliant ideas, but you know, one, one thing that's happened with all this is it, my, my buddy, my good buddy, Noah Moss told me recently, he said, Jesse, the internet's boring. All the websites are the same. It's a big picture, one button, maybe two. Maybe there's not a button, it's just a word. You have to scroll down, another picture button. It's like, remember in the 90s when all the websites were ugly and you wondered how each website was going to be ugly in a different way and it was exciting? Remember those days? He tells me. Well, now it's boring. They're all the same website. And these code monkeys get these these ideas for a great, brilliant, new, clean, useful, functional, scalable, responsive. Oh, that's the word responsive. It's a clean, using, friendly user, accessible, simple, easy to see. And they, they talk on and on and on like this to describe this theme for reading, focusing, on your content, and this is how they talk. And when you look at at computer code, Google it. Go to Google, type computer code, and then click on images. When you look at that all day, computer code all day, it is kind of nice to have your desktop and your workspace and your website be clean. But when you don't, that might not be what you want. So the reason that all the websites look the same today, boring picture, boring button in the middle, maybe some words, that's it. Some, sometimes that's useful, sometimes, but not always. The reason that there's so much of that and everyone's writing the same theme, you go on WordPress, look for themes, they're different, but they're all basically the same. The reason that's happening is because the code monkeys, the technicians, are deciding how the users should have their furniture arranged. And that's not how we need to continue things. And that's the reason that I like to learn both the writing and the computer language. And I hope that the biggest thing I do after I get Watch Stand Pray 365 written as a book and available in print on demand, and after I, I clear off a few more projects, I hope to go to school and learn what I need to learn, self school, learn it from you to me, whatever, YouTube, and bring these two worlds together. That's what I really want to do. I'm Jesse Steele, and I wear a lot of hats.